This is not intended for legal advice, nor is it intended to provide any doubt or affirmation to your moral compass, only offering facts and truth. Everything represented here is purely for educational and entertainment purposes. And remember, be responsible, be respectful, and above all else, don't be a jackass. Okay, coming to you from the deep, dark depths of the Ecom Bunker, we're going to talk about the dirty word in radio today. Yep, that's right, encryption. We're going to go over the rules, the exceptions to the rules, and then we're going to get a preview of some software that can do some really cool stuff. If you operate under uh, Part 90, which is a private land mobile radio service, you're covered with encryption. You can pause the video and you can uh, read this directly from the uh, FCC website. If you're operating under Part 95 at GMRS, your data options are limited to containing a brief text message or location data from GMRS to GMRS unit. There's also a time restriction on that down to uh, one second on data transmissions. There's also specific intervals of how much data can be transmitted in a specific period of time. You can look that Part 95 rules up and uh, do your homework yourself on that. And now that brings us to uh, Part 97, Good Gravy Hammer in the Amateur Radio Service. We're going to get some people that are going to throw a fit, but here we go. So if you look under uh, Part 97, 113, Section 4, about halfway through, you see where messages encoding for the purpose of obscuring their meaning is part of these prohibited transmissions. And I've heard arguments both for and against whether or not messages that are encrypted are actually encoded or encrypted for the purpose of obscuring their meaning. On the surface, it might seem pretty cut and dry. If it's encrypted, it's obscuring it. We've also heard the argument made that if you're using standard data transmission modes, you're not trying to circumvent what's allowed as far as a specific allowed emission, then it's not necessarily obscuring, it's just data that's being transferred. I've also heard some amateurs that are advocating for encryption on this because it lends to access control. And access control itself is a necessity, especially in this day and age when and all of our communications are virtually encrypted from end to end. Then I've also heard some other amateur friends that are vehemently against any type of encryption on there because they think it would lend towards commercialization of the airwaves, nefarious activities, and such as that. But honestly, I think uh, most of the people that are advocating against encryption are probably the same people that peek out the windows at their neighbors but never really speak to them, would rifle through their mail if they had the opportunity. And they're also probably the same guys at the fraternal organizations that want to give everybody shit but not really help out with anything. And just like any other set of rules, sometimes there are exceptions. And with Part 97, you have subsection 401, 403, and 405. 401 deals with operation during a disaster. 403, the safety of life and protection of property. And 405, a station in distress. So if you're getting into a disaster, there's a threat of a life and there's a threat of property and if the station is in distress a lot of the rules fly out the window it goes down to no provision of those rules prevents any use by an amateur station of any means of radio communication at its disposal to provide essential communication needs in connection with the immediate safety of human life and the immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. And what's really interesting is uh, August 2006 issue of CQ Magazine, they had a big write-up on encryption. You can Google that and find that for yourself. What's really important is uh, the last section I've got highlighted here. Notably quoted in that article is that years ago, the ARRL, Board of Directors, they agreed that it would be a good idea to petition the FCC to permit data encryption. And the reason they didn't do that is it turns out there wasn't a need for petition because when it comes down to the purposes of network access or access control, it's not necessary. It's only on obscuring the meaning of the message. And that's where it gets into this gray, fuzzy mud where you try to figure out if you're access controlling or obscuring the meaning. And especially when it comes to data, that's difficult. And say for the purposes of 
emergencies or shit hit the fan, it goes out the window anyway. And I'm, I'm not talking like you burnt your grilled cheese and you want to get DoorDash to bring you something. We're talking like Rick Grimes in the street, zombies and such, that type of emergency. And now one other thing that is really notable about the uh, this quote from this article is that, you know, the emergency communications, they have an exception to that rule and it essentially suspends all the rules and drills on an emergency, but it's absolutely essential to practice the system regularly if you expect it to work when there is an emergency. So how do you practice this so you can be proficient if it's not an emergency. So, I mean, there, there, there has to be some level of compromise and understanding when it comes to this. Which comes down full circle back to the beginning of the video. Be responsible. Be respectful. Don't be a jackass. You need to do what you need to do to practice these things. But you just don't go out there and you use everything all willy-nilly. All right, so now I'm going to get off my soapbox and we're going to take a look at this software. And this software is going to be available pre-release to subscribers to the channel. So if you want to get first crack at using this and looking at it, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get the notifications on when this is released. Please bear in mind that the software is currently in development. We have our crack team of software engineers working on it right now as we speak, and it's going to be released as soon as possible. When we open up the software, we have our inbox here to our top, the operations pane there to the left. The inbox currently shows uh, just example messages that's been in here for testing. We're using just XYZ456 for testing call sign. If we click on the cell call button, that shows us one message that we're going to use for example today. And with this, encryption is 100% optional. If you click on an unencrypted message, you can see it displayed here uh, in the clear. This is just this test message that was sent. Now back to our intended test message on cell call. If we click on the little envelope, we're going to go ahead and open up that message message. It's shown that it's detected that it's an encrypted message. Enter in our encryption key and then click decrypt message. That was a static filled triple scrambled microwave transmission between two soldiers talking in Mandarin Chinese.